Hey everyone, welcome back. Today's video is an exciting one because I just got a brand new soldering iron. It's a Hakko FX600 and it is a nice little tool. It's one of the more basic models from Hakko, but most of the soldering I do is stuff like through hole components and the occasional SMD part. I don't really need a big bulky soldering station or anything. Plus it's got an adjustable heat setting, um, replaceable tips, and an LED indicator to tell you when it's heating up or cooling down or at temperature. So yeah, this is my new tool and I feel like I need a fun project to welcome it into my toolbox. So I was thinking I would make a programmable game controller out of an Arduino Pro Micro and some tactile buttons and some resistors because two of the buttons I got are LED buttons. So these buttons actually have LEDs built into them. I'll need to use a resistor on them. But basically I took all these parts, all these buttons from an old VCR and I've been meaning to, to put them into some kind of use. So this should be a good application for it. Basically I'm going to make the button pads on each side up here. So you have like your direction pad over here and then the regular like function buttons over here. And then these will be like start and select. But I'm also gonna wire them up to have the LEDs independent so I can do things like flash the LEDs or make them light up when the button's being pressed or something like that. I mean, the nice thing is that it's all gonna be uh, controlled using an Arduino. So if I wanna change the functionality later on, all I have to do is upload some new code to this and boom, I have a new controller. And later on, I'll probably add other features, like I was thinking maybe a switch down here, if I can find a good switch, so I can toggle modes, maybe have it switch between being one type of controller and then hit the switch and now it's another type of controller. Or you could have like a cheat mode where when you flip the switch, it goes into like turbo button mode or something. Just some ideas. But anyway, the basic construction is going to be simple. I'll use the tactile buttons, all with a common ground. So I'll probably just solder a wire around one of the pins for all of these on both sides and then connect them to one of the ground pins. And then I'll solder a wire across, you know, on the back, obviously, uh, to the pins that are going to be used the, as the digital input pins. And then the code is going to have them all as pull-up inputs so that they can share a common ground like that and I don't have to run more wires than I have to. So that should be nice. And then, yeah, the LEDs are going to need resistors and I'll probably put those over here on the side and just run through to those and up to a pin that I can program to control them. Well, let's get started. And here it is all put together. You can see I made quite a few mistakes, like trying to hold these wires with my alligator clips, left them pretty crimped. And then I was so used to my old soldering iron, which was not as efficient at this one as at rebounding from the heat. So I accidentally, uh, sorry, that's my rooster. So I accidentally melted some of the wire coating on these. It's no big deal because they're not making contact with anything and ideally I'll probably put something over the back or put this on in, in an enclosure of some kind. But that's not too bad. Seems like it's all working. I've got the code already loaded in and you can see it's programmed to just flash these two LEDs back and forth. And the buttons are all like your A, B, X, Y, up, right, down, left, start and select. And uh, yeah, let's go take a look at that code. Okay, so here's the code. Um, first, obviously, I'm just including the keyboard library so that we can turn this thing into a USB keyboard. Then this enum is to, you know, number all these from zero through the number of keys that I'm using. I'll use this 
to know the length of the arrays later on. Uh, then this pin mapping here um, is in the same order that these are enumed. So we can use these as indexes into the pin map. And these are just the digital IO pins that I soldered all the, the buttons to, to correspond to these features. And then these are the keyboard keys that are going to be sent for the corresponding buttons in terms of the index into this array. So these are constants that are included with the keyboard library. And then you can also use the direct like character code here. Space is obviously going to be the, the space bar. And then I'm keeping track of the states because I only want to send key events when the states change. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I'll try to explain that here in a minute. So then I'm also defining two uh, constants here. One is named LED0, and that's going to be the left LED on the select button. And then LED1 is going to be the LED on the start button. And these are just the digital pins that those correspond to. So with the keyboard library, you have to say, you know, begin using the keyboard. Here I'm uh, iterating over all of those keys and setting them all to be inputs, um, pull-up inputs, so that we can use them all with a common ground. And then I'm setting the states array to the initial state so that the changes can be tracked afterwards. And then I'm just setting the two LEDs to be output pins. Then in the loop down here, I'm grabbing the time in milliseconds, which I'm using to flash the LEDs with, and then just allocating a state variable. So this shouldn't be that complex if you're familiar with C code. Basically, I'm just dividing that time by 1,000 because it's in milliseconds, and there's 1,000 milliseconds in a second. And then doing a modulo 2 so that, you know, every second we have a blink. And they're, they're set up opposite so that when this one's on, this one's off, and vice versa. So that's what makes the LEDs blink back and forth. And then here is what controls the actual keyboard. So for every key, I'm grabbing the current state from the pin and saying, hey, if this state isn't the same as the last state, the one we stored in that array, then I want to do something. If it is the same, then fine. It, it's just the same that it was the last time we checked and we don't need to do anything. But if it is, if it has changed, if the state is low, because remember these are pull-up resistors, so low means that the key is pressed. So if the state is low and it had just changed, then we're going to send that key press. And then if the state is high after being changed, you know that they just let go of the key, so we're going to send the key release and then update the state so that the next time through we know what the current state is. And that's it. That's that's all the code that's required to turn that thing into a keyboard, which we can use as a game controller. OK, so here I have Laka running on a, uh, a Rock 64 board here with a projector. Sorry about the noise. The projector is pretty loud. And I've got my controller hooked up to it. So I should be able to just use it like a normal controller. And I've got Zombies Ate My Neighbors loaded onto this.
<laughs> Try to play it with one hand so I can hold the camera. So yeah, it works pretty well. Let's see if we can use the squirt gun. Yep. We can pause it. Cool. Got everything working. Well, that's it for this video. My new Hakko has officially been welcomed to the team, and I've got a new game controller. Well, I've got the start of a new game controller. I'll probably add more to this in another video. But until next time, bye!